Okay, I know Mac is going to be pissed off. I left him earlier. He's been here for a while. <laughs> and, uh, and I hear the telltale signs of how we have to clean this particular uh, enclosure. Um, and it's with a soft bristle brush because we do not want to spray because you're about to see what we're cleaning. And uh, there could be some really, really uh, devastating um, reactions to our solution if we were just to get in there and spray. And uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so knowing your chemicals, how to mix them, how to apply them, having the processes and the procedures in place so you can be effective and efficient and not fuck shit up is one of the most important parts of running a pressure washing business. And if you want to get the best training, check out how to wash. Spring sale, $100 off. Use promo code SPRING. Link in the description. Hey, man. God. Are you pissed off with me yet? Not you, just the job itself. <laughs> I've already had to take two breaks because I felt myself getting angry. Did you have a Snickers? No, oh. I, I saw it on there. No, I, don't, I try not to eat that stuff. So. so this process, obviously we've got all kinds of these beautiful plants everywhere. And uh, we've learned that we do not want to um, spray our chemical on the screens because it can go through. And like I've talked about before, the screens, if you think about what a screen is, it's like millions of these little teeny wires and every side of that wire has, it's a surface and mildew grows. So you have to hit it from the sides, you have to hit it from the back, from the front, and uh, it can be a real pain in the butt. Sure is. <laughs> so tell me how you guys would do this job in the comment section down below. If you do it like this, say yes. If not, tell me how you do it. And so we're not even applying chemical. We are just agitating, which obviously isn't going to kill all the organics, but it's going to loosen it up. And then when we hit it with soft pressure, because the last thing we want to do is hurt anything. I don't think so. They're getting ready to put it on the market. What? They're getting ready to put it on the market. Oh, we're never going to talk again though. <laughs> And you can see all of the mildew just getting spread around. And I'm going to back up when you spray this. Also, I'm going to be doing a free web class in a couple days on how I grew my business to over $750,000 a year. It's going to be packed with some great tips to help you grow your business. And we're also going to be giving away some free stuff. There are limited seats, so check out the first link in the description below. It's not coming through hardly at all, but it's oh, you can see all that green just melting away. Uh, so I've already done these two screens. Yeah. I'm going to have to rinse it from the inside as well with just straight water right. and stuff. But do you think that'll be good enough? I think so. I'm not getting the top. No, no. We never do. Um, I do need um, your advice, though, about how to do these burner up here. Okay. Because if I spray it with chemical, it leaks over on top of the roof. And I yeah. Okay. Well, they do have gutters. Yeah, but it, the, it's so fine of a mesh that the overspray just comes right off of it. Okay. And onto the top of the screen. So probably what I would do, and I know you're gonna hate to, for me to say this, because you've got all your soft wash stuff out, I would probably just uh, downstream it. See, that's what I was thinking. So, I mean, I forgot my, my stuff over here. I would downstream it, but I just, I'm scared of runoff. Yeah, but with the downstream, it's like a 1.3% solution. So it's gonna kill what's up there. It's gonna do a good job cleaning. And it's not going to hurt anything down here. You'll, I, obviously, I want you to like take that hose and, and just get everything wet before yeah. you do it. Okay. So that big white fish and one of these little fish, those are, uh, we thought they were goldfish. And essentially, that's what a koi is. But we got those for my kids probably 10, 15 years ago. I know maybe 10 years ago, and uh, they got too big for our cage, and so I asked uh, our neighbor, Karen, if she wanted them, and she said yes, and they have done unbelievably well in here. So uh, I'm gonna try my best not to kill them. 
I got lots of stories. Oh, I believe that. You know, and hey, what's funny, Mac? So we were just talking about something, and uh, Mac said, um, I, he was talking about something, and I go, yeah, I got lots of stories. He's like, yeah, I bet. So people say all the time on these videos, they're like, how do you always have problems with customers? How do you always, it seems like you're always breaking stuff. You're always, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and in the grand scope of things, like of a hundred jobs, how many times do we have something go wrong? Very few. Yeah. So, but I mean, it's just because we do so much work. You are just, the viewers are just getting a condensed version of things going wrong. We don't tell about how everything goes right about every single job. Yeah. It would just be boring, mundane. Yes. No one wants to hear about, you know, Max day. Um, we could do a day in the life of Mac and that <laughs> would be boring. Every day. Yeah. The same shit every day. But, um, so that's what we do. We tell the stories that are going to help people that, you know, might, you know, they might get into a situation like we get into on occasion and, uh, and it's helpful because then you can go back and be like, Oh yeah, I remember when this happened and that happened and maybe, uh, you know, take that and put that in your playbook. But, um, have you run into, we've, we've run into some crazy stuff. Yes. Like. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like we, there's just been so many stories, you know. That <laughs> it's hard to think of one right off the bat. And when we do pools, we'll spray it because the chlorine is not going to have any impact. Obviously, we're very cognizant of what's around and whatnot. But we just try to keep uh, most of the dirt out of the pool. Right. Because, God, I don't know how many times I get when I had my landscape business, uh, I'd get the call from the customers with the pool. And they're like, your guys just blew everything into the pool. Like they'd run down with a zero turn with the uh, the uh, chute going the uh, direction of the pool. just, And then they wouldn't grab a skimmer and clean it off. Typical. Okay, so we just done the roof so far. Yes. And what, about a quarter of the... Not even that. <laughs> yeah, a quarter, uh, not even that. But yeah, we've gotten some of the screens done. And uh, that's the game plan. Roof, screens, then you can tackle the house because that's the easiest part. Everything else, roofs aren't difficult. This did have some angles that were a little bit more difficult because of all of the ground covering that we had to be Holy very religion. cognizant of. And these are things that you need to take into account when you're quoting these jobs because, and it's funny, Mac texted me. Um, and I'll put that up on the screen, but, um, uh, he was, he was basically saying like, dude, this is going to take all day, which I knew because that's the only job we've got on the schedule for him today. And that is, uh, you know, and he's like, dude, I never, I think you said you never want to do this house or charge yeah. him out the ass. Yeah. Um, because both. both, yeah, charge him out the ass and then don't ever come to this house again. <laughs> right. And fortunately we might not have to because, uh, they're moving and it's all anyway. Um, so the, the roof was a little bit more difficult, but that what I was saying is you have to be super cognizant. Like think about all the time spent watering, making sure we're protecting everything, everything, everywhere. Because if we don't, that, that could cost us the entire, I, I mean, hell, if we, if we ruin some plants here, I mean, that's way more than what I'm charging these people because they've got some really expensive stuff. That Japanese maple right there inside this lanai, that thing's probably maybe $1,000, maybe $1,200. And everything else here is ridiculously expensive too. And not easily replaceable because these are mature plants. And if you don't charge accordingly, and if you don't plan accordingly for both your time, what you're charging, then you're going to run into issues where you're just out here working for free. And that is the last thing that anybody wants to do. Yeah, this process has evolved for us. The first time, I think we tried to do it with uh, the downstream injector. We'd hit it from both sides, but it just was so much uh, prep work and then watering. And then the, the next time we decided we were going to do it with a bucket and a brush... And then the chemicals were, you know, also still of concern because you have to rinse and you could still have overspray. So uh, I think last time we just did it with uh, the water fed pole brush and no chemical and it did really good. It was a year ago. So the mildew came back, but it was a year, which is about average here uh, where we live. We do all of our customers about every year. Some of the more uh, discerning ones go 
um, six months, eight months. I'm going to come up with some fake outrageous price for this job. Okay. Could be a real price. <laughs> well, I mean, there, it's, it's, it will make money. Oh, no, I know that, but. Another thing that I noticed is the oxidation on all this aluminum, which is not something that our process is going to remedy. Obviously, if you had a product like Oxnox from Southeast Softwash, you could spray that on. You could upcharge and make a little bit more money, but uh, we're not going to do that today. Okay, so we just done the roof so far. Yes. And what, about a quarter of the... Not even that. <laughs> yeah, a quarter, uh, not even that. But yeah, we've gotten some of the screens done and uh, that's the game plan. Roof, screens, then you can tackle the house because that's the easiest part. Everything else, roofs aren't difficult. This did have some angles that were a little bit more difficult because of all of the ground covering that we had to be oh, very yeah. cognizant of. I'd probably put the ladder up there. Yeah. There's even a good spot. Wow. I'd put the ladder maybe right here and then you can spray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can't put it right there uh -uh. in a bare spot. Because the tree. tree. Yeah. And these are things that you need to take into account when you're quoting these jobs because, and it's funny, Mac texted me, um, <laughs> and I'll put that up on the screen, but um, uh, he, was, he was basically saying like, dude, this is going to take all day, which I knew because that's the only job we've got on the schedule for him today. And that is, uh, you know, and he's like, dude, I never, I think you said you never want to do this house or charge yeah. him out the ass. Yeah. Um, because both. both, yeah, charge him out the ass and then don't ever come to this house again. <laughs> right. And fortunately we might not have to because, uh, they're moving and it's all anyway. Um, so the, the roof was a little bit more difficult, but that what I was saying is you have to be super cognizant. Like think about all the time spent watering making sure we're protecting everything, everything, everywhere. Because if we don't, that, that could cost us the entire, I, I mean, hell, if we, if we ruin some plants here, I mean, that's way more than what I'm charging these people because they've got some really expensive stuff. That Japanese maple right there inside this lanai, that thing's probably nine, 10, I don't know, maybe a thousand dollars, maybe $1,200. And everything else here is ridiculously expensive too. Um, and not easily replaceable because these are mature plants. And if you don't charge accordingly, and if you don't plan accordingly for both your time, what you're charging, then you're going to run into issues where you're just out here working for free. And that is the last thing that anybody wants to do. Yeah, this process has evolved for us. The first time I think we tried to do it with uh, the downstream injector. We'd hit it from both sides, but it just was so much uh, prep work and then watering. And then the, the next time we decided we were going to do it with a bucket and a brush. And then the chemicals were, you know, also still of concern because you have to rinse and you could still have overspray. So uh, I think last time we just did it with uh, the water fed pole brush and no chemical. And it did really good. It was a year ago. So the mildew came back, but it was a year, which is about average here uh, where we live. We do all of our customers about every year. Some of the more... Uh, discerning ones go six months, eight months. Another thing that I noticed is the oxidation on all this aluminum, which is not something that our process is going to remedy. Obviously, if you had a product like Oxnox from Southeast Softwash, you could spray that on. You could upcharge and make a little bit more money, but uh, we're not going to do that today. Hey, was that a shitty look you just gave me? It's just shitty because I'm shitty. <laughs> I'm not doing the driveway today. Okay. It took everything I had to muster up to get this house done. Yeah. Are you almost done? No. So we didn't finish this one up the other day. We came back. You got a bunch done. What was that? That was probably a seven-hour day. Uh, just here alone, yeah. Right. We had another job before that. So, 
nice long day for you. Uh, you were able to get the roof done. You were able to get the um, the, house the house done, the lanai, which was uh, quite labor intensive. And uh, we came back today on a Saturday, despite the fact that we try not to work on Saturdays to knock it out. Uh, but uh, well done. Everything's looking great. Customer is happy. They're going to put their house on the market, get some pictures taken. So go check out Quote IQ at myquoteiq.com. Obviously, if you're interested, go check out How to Wash at pwcourse.com. And uh, you can take advantage of that 30% off special uh, for the spring promotion. Use promo code SPRING. And uh, that's it. Mac, what do you got to say? Hit the like and subscribe. Yeah, I like it. All right, thanks.